I truly believe that our game is the most realistic computer baseball game that has ever been created. And when you look at our game side by side with other games out there, that statement seems ridiculous. But I stand by it, uh, 100%. Here are screen captures from two online baseball games. Someone else's game and our game, Iconic Baseball. Now, which one looks more real? Hmm, take your time. Correct. Now, which one is more real? This one's harder. Oh, wrong. The correct answer is Iconic Baseball. Why? Physics. And to learn more, we turn to Einstein. He understood time and space as one unified concept, space-time. And of course, he was talking about baseball. Now, the batter has to decide if the location is right and when he should swing simultaneously. To do this, the batter depends on his depth perception as the ball is coming toward him, which may explain why the Pittsburgh Pirates haven't won in a while. <laughs> now this image from a game which is not ours is a three-dimensional rendering on a two-dimensional flat screen. And if you're just watching the game on TV, then let the batter worry about hitting the pitch. But if you're playing a video game and you are the batter, then there's a problem. There is no depth perception on a 2D monitor. Iconic baseball, on the other hand, is top-down, a bird's-eye view of the field, flat, two-dimensional. You can easily see the ball as it goes from the mound to the plate. Swing too late, the ball goes foul. Swing too early, the ball goes foul. Swing just right, and the ball will go into play. Well, that takes care of time, but what about space? Well, we've got that covered too. If the ball makes contact with the bat in the center of the plate, then the ball is hit squarely and will be hit on a line. If, however, the bat makes contact with the ball away from the center, then the ball will be popped up or hit into the ground. The further it is away from the center of the plate, the more exaggerated this phenomena will be. There is no high or low pitch in this flat plane you need only be concerned with the inside-outside range. This is what makes Iconic Baseball different. Now let me talk a little bit about what makes Iconic Baseball special. So when you're the batter, you decide whether or not to swing and when. You control each player that comes to the plate and each one has a distinct personality. Now visually, these are just circles with numbers, but what defines them are three tools speed, how fast the player runs, power, the velocity of the bat, and I, how much of the plate results in a line drive. Each tool's value is represented by a row of red boxes ranging from one to five. Five being the strongest, one being the weakest. Now this player has good speed, so you might want to try bunting. This player has good power, so you might want to sit on a fastball and try to yank one. This player has good eye, making it easier to fight off pitches if the count is not in your favor. The longer you play, the more you will find iconic baseball emulating the real game. So, when you're the pitcher, you control the speed and location of the pitch. Now, fastballs are less likely to be hit, but slower pitches won't be hit quite as hard. So pitch selection is very important. Now while I'm on the subject of pitch speed, let me bring in my blackboard here. If you take the number of feet between the mound and home plate, which is 66.5 feet, and you divide that by the speed or velocity of the pitch, let's say 100 miles an hour, multiplied by 5,280, which is the number of feet in a mile, take all of that and divide that into the number of seconds in an hour, 3,600, you get 
0.45, which is the amount of time in seconds it takes for a ball traveling 100 miles an hour to go from the mound to the plate. So roughly a little less than half a second. If you change the velocity to maybe 70 miles an hour, the figure changes to something like 0.65. Iconic Baseball mimics these times exactly. So if you were ever curious as to whether or not you could react in time to a 100 mile an hour fastball, well now you can find out. So on to location. By locating the pitch effectively, you can work the count in your favor and try to stay away from the middle of the plate where the hitters can do more damage. Now there is a margin, however, for where the pitch will end up. Aiming the pitch results in a window of accuracy, and this is a random element that adds to the pitcher-batter dynamic. Well, that wraps up part two of this tutorial. Uh, remember to use the contact info for any questions or comments, and as always, have fun!